Hello, my name is Dan. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm part of the NYU Shanghai admissions team. Having lived in China myself, I could really speak firsthand to the value of being immersed in this dynamic and diverse country. And I'm excited to share some more information about the ins and outs of what it's like to be a student at NYU Shanghai, located in what I believe to be one of the most exciting cities in the world. Now, I think it's important to start by going back in time just a little bit um, to our founding in 1831. NYU was founded to be a, a place where students from all walks of life would come together um, for an urban experience to really be exposed to the dynamism of the world. We've really been at the forefront of creativity and innovation in the world of higher education. And we've developed a sense of inclusivity that really does span borders and time zones. We've expanded quite a bit since our founding in 1831 to now include three different degree granting campuses and 12 additional locations around the world where students can study. In doing so, we're preparing students for the world that they're graduating into, a world that is more interconnected than ever. And as such, it demands a new set of skills, a set of skills that NYU is very much um, preparing students to have upon graduation. In all of our campuses, we strive to create a community where students can be free to be themselves, as well as to be able to engage in discussions around the most pressing social issues of our time. As an NYU Shanghai student, you are an NYU student, which means you get to share in the same incredible legacy of this school. Now, as part of NYU's global network, we realized the importance of being in China. So we welcomed our first class uh, at NYU Shanghai in 2013. And NYU Shanghai became a place where China and the rest of the world meet. With students coming from all over China, half of our students coming from all over China, and the other half representing about 70 or so different nationalities. The non-Chinese students who come to NYU Shanghai often have never been to China before and quite commonly have no experience with Mandarin Chinese. But they're all coming to NYU Shanghai to learn more about China. And at the same time, in this tight-knit community, students are learning more about the rest of the world as well. China has undergone quite massive development in the last 50 years, going from a mostly agrarian society to a rapidly industrializing one. China maintains its roots and traditions while embracing a modern globalized world. Just like many other cities in China, Shanghai has modernized at an incredible pace um, in the last 30 years, which allows its residents to benefit from an eclectic mix of different cultures and cuisines and architecture styles. And the special mix of, of students we have at NYU Shanghai, I really think speaks to our mutual commitment of creating strong bonds um, and understanding between students from China, uh, the US and the rest of the world. At NYU Shanghai, students are not only learning more about the particular areas of study that they may be, um, that they may be diving into, but they're also learning more about China and China's role um, in those academic areas as well. And China is playing such a large role in so many fields. So with this particular knowledge, you're very much prepared for the world that you're graduating into, an interconnected world in which China is playing an increasingly large role. Now, we know the move to China um, can seem a little bit daunting. Um, like I mentioned, many of our students have never been to China before. So we want to make sure that students are supported and there are a lot of systems in place that, that help students to feel, help uh, students to make this transition smoothly. Um, before you arrive, you'll meet a number of different individuals. For example, an orientation ambassador who's an upperclassman who um, will lead you, uh, the new incoming students through the orientation process. You'll meet other first year students through social media um, and also uh, your academic advisor as well to help uh, plan your academic journeys. And of course, support for other things like um, your visa for studying in China as well. Um, whatever questions you might have, um, you'll certainly be able to get uh, the answers uh, as you prepare to, to make this um, transition to your NYU Shanghai life. 
Um, when you finally arrive, the bonds that are formed through our unique student body really do start from day one in the residence halls. Um, it's really wonderful to see all the friendships that are formed in the residential uh, space. Um, housing is guaranteed for all four years, and we pair first, um, first year uh, Chinese students with non-Chinese students uh, together. Um, students are required to live on campus for the first two years, um, and then after that, you're welcome to live off campus. But once again, housing is guaranteed for all four years. Uh, each floor is overseen by an RA um, or resident assistant, um, your go-to for any questions you might have in that space. Um, but they also serve as a peer mentor, um, and they often host a number um, of fun events um, as well. So really helpful resource for uh, getting to know um, the city, getting to know the different ways of, of navigating the city, um, uh, and maybe some tips on different um, things you might want to try out in terms of uh, involvement uh, at NYU Shanghai. And speaking of involvement, um, there are quite a, a bit of ways to get involved uh, at NYU Shanghai. You could really make Shanghai your home from day one. There are countless clubs that you might want to get involved with. One of our most popular is called Green Shanghai. It started with installing a green roof on our own building, uh, but it's expanded um, quite a bit to now working with different green organizations uh, throughout the city on a number of different uh, green projects. Now um, we have clubs, um, business clubs, identity-based clubs, uh, music clubs, um, clubs um, involved with um, a, a wide variety of, of different uh, areas that you might be interested in. You can join a club, take it in a new direction. You can even start a new club if you feel there, um, if there are, is an area that you'd like to explore more and, and you feel there'd be interest among uh, your classmates, then you certainly are welcome to start a new club as well. If uh, you're interested in athletics, we field sports teams um, in uh, basketball, soccer, badminton, volleyball, and tennis. We're part of an intercollegiate league, uh, Shanghai Intercollegiate League. So you'll be competing against other universities throughout the city. Um, we also have less competitive sports as well. Now, as far as the city of Shanghai um, as a whole, it's really easy to navigate the city. So fun fact, Shanghai has the longest lines of metro of any city in the world, uh, and it's still rapidly expanding. Uh, that can get you anywhere you really need to go. Um, we have a, a subway stop from your campus, um, um, so that can be a really efficient uh, way of getting around quickly, but also um, taxis or cabs are easy to find. You can use an app um, called Didi, which is like uh, Uber or Lyft, a rideshare app for getting around the city as well. Um, there is an extensive bike share system. Students often enjoy biking uh, around different parts of the city as well. So no shortage of ways to, to make the city um, manageable and, and being able to access different parts of the city pretty easily. So we have a brand new campus and I'm very excited um, that the new incoming class of 2027 will be the first class that will spend all four years um, of their uh, undergraduate journeys on this new campus. And I wanna share some highlights. Um, I should first note that this campus was built from the ground up, um, meaning members of the NYU Shanghai community had a say um, in what this new campus would look like. And one thing that um, was mentioned that was important that we wanted for this new campus um, was green space. And one of the first things you'll notice is the new campus wraps around this beautiful quad or, or courtyard with green space in the middle. Um, the green space is also um, intentionally integrated throughout the entirety of the building. Uh, we also have a greenhouse and organic garden. Um, it really is um, you know, beautiful to be able to, to be um, a part of all this, this green space on campus. Um, now, we also have a number of other exciting facilities, including a black box theater, uh, a dedicated VR space, trading floor for business students, um, a really nice athletic space, including a number of courts and a brand new gymnasium, um, a two-story uh, campus canteen with foods from around the world and multiple ca uh, cafes um, throughout the campus as well. We're very excited um, to, to be part of this new home uh, at NYU Shanghai, and we hope the incoming students are excited uh, to experience this um, as well. Um, I mentioned the subway before. We do have a subway stop you know, right by campus, um, so you'll be able to access the rest of the city uh, quite easily. 
So yeah, really excited to, to welcome uh, the new students to, um, our, to our new home. Now the academics at NYU Shanghai are um, in some ways similar to um, what you might find at our other campuses in the sense that we are rooted in a core curriculum. Um, NYU does firmly believe in the value of taking courses in a number of different areas. Um, research really does show um, that taking uh, courses in different areas does inspire you um, to be creative and to be able to look at things from a number of different perspectives. Um, it really allows you to become a more well-rounded uh, individual. Uh, and employers regularly say that they're looking for uh, employees who have these types uh, of soft skills. So you're required to complete a core curriculum and at NYU Shanghai, it is a bit unique in that it includes Chinese language. Um, so all students are required to graduate um, proficient in Chinese language, but more about the specifics of Chinese language at NYU Shanghai in just a bit. Now, with these academic um, core curriculum areas, you'll be choosing classes that fulfill the different requirements. Maybe for algorithmic thinking, you'll um, really kind of foster your creativity through a creative coding lab. Um, maybe with social or, cult or cultural foundations, you'll take a look at US-China relations or maybe the Chinese family or food and Chinese history. A number of exciting course options that can really allow you to, to dig deeper into an area that maybe you're feel familiar with, maybe you're less familiar with. I've heard many times uh, examples of students taking a class in one of these areas and all of a sudden discovering a new passion uh, and making it a major, a second major, maybe a minor. Now, a note on majors, um, you actually are starting, all NYU Shanghai students are starting undeclared uh, when you're starting at NYU Shanghai. And then you choose your major during your second year. So now let's talk a little bit about majors. You can declare your major as early as the beginning of your second year, um, but also as late as the end as well. And you'll ultimately be choosing from one of these major options. To uh, highlight a few, I, I should note that a lot of these majors allow a good bit of flex uh, flexibility. Allow, they allow you to customize based on what you might be most interested in focusing on. For example, social science. Students will pick uh, focus or concentration in an area like international relations, uh, global public health, um, psychology. Um, in Similarly with humanities, you'll focus on an area like creative writing, history, philosophy. Um, if you really wanna be creative, we have a self-designed honors major inspired by NYU's Gallatin School of Individualized Study, where students are creating their own program of study, bringing in together a diverse uh, range of different dis academic disciplines available at NYU Shanghai. We also have um, a number of majors that are really quite popular and preparing students very much um, for modern technologies in the world. For example, interactive media arts is really using technology in, in creative purposes to bring things into the real world. Think 3D uh, printing technology, uh, which students are heavily involved in. Um, and also we have a um, one of our most recent majors, interactive media and business combines that with different business skills. Really wonderful for students who might be interested uh, in getting involved with startups. Um, and getting, getting in, in, into that space. So a lot of different options in terms of majors. You can uh, choose a second major. You can complete um, a variety of minors. Um, students are often um, combining things in a number of different ways and your faculty um, advisor will kind of help you um, work all, uh, plan all this out um, to really you know, create your unique academic journey. Now, to talk a little bit more about Mandarin Chinese, it is part of the core curriculum. And to really emphasize this point, you don't need to have any Chinese language ability to start at NYU Shanghai. Um, some students are coming to NYU Shanghai with a wide variety of different uh, Mandarin Chinese backgrounds. If you have taken some Mandarin Chinese before, that's great. Um, and we do have a placement test that you can take over the summer before you start at NYU Shanghai um, to place you in an appropriate level. And we really do have classes for everyone. Um, if you are looking to maybe improve really quickly, um, you can take a course over the summer. It's an eight or nine week uh, immersion program. That's the equivalent of two whole semesters of Chinese in just that short period. Uh, really popular among students who maybe are just starting off and want to improve really quickly. 
Um, once you get to a higher level, we have advanced coursework in areas like reading a Chinese newspaper, um, discussing documentary films in Chinese, classical Chinese, um, uh, discussing modern topics in Chinese, um, whatever you might be um, interested in. There's there there are a lot of really um, exciting advanced coursework uh, courses um, that help you to look at a number of different uh, high level areas um, using your Mandarin Chinese. Now. There are also opportunities to use your Chinese language in your internships, um, which we'll talk about more deeply in just a little bit. Um, some internships may involve you using your Mandarin Chinese quite a bit. Um, others um, may be less so, so that there are different options for you. If you're interested in preparing for the HSK exam, which is a, a well-known Chinese proficiency exam that a lot of employers are familiar with, uh, we'll, uh, we have uh, prep work for that exam. Um, but also remember, you are located in China, uh, where Chinese is the primary language spoken. Sure, you'll find plenty of speakers of English and other languages in Shanghai, um, but you'll hear Chinese as you're, you're going about your daily life. Um, and I can really do speak firsthand to the value of being immersed in Chinese language and have it be part of your daily life. Whether you are um, leaving class and you know getting on the, the subway, exploring a new restaurant, um, opening a bank account, um, you know, chatting with your Chinese roommate, there are going to be constantly opportunities uh, to practice Chinese. And this is so valuable when it comes to um, improving your Chinese language ability. So I hope you're excited to really dive into the language um, and make some great improvements. Students are, are getting to such a wonderful place with their Chinese language by the time they graduate at NYU Shanghai. And it's just so exciting to see. Now, the faculty at NYU Shanghai really are you know, wonderful. And with a small student faculty ratio, you're going to be taught by full-time faculty and have a lot of opportunities to have small kind of discussion-based classes. Even the larger introductory courses will certainly be broken up into smaller uh, discussion-based groups. And then as you progress uh, in your academic paths, um, you'll have so many opportunities to have uh, really small class sizes, um, which is just a great environment for learning. Uh, the faculty members are extremely talented and quite diverse themselves, representing about 33 uh, different nationalities. If you're excited about research, I have good news for you that there are uh, quite a, a wealth of different opportunities um, for, um, in terms of funding, we have the Dean's Undergraduate Research Fund or DERF, which is funding for a summer research project that can be completed um, in Shanghai, but also outside of Shanghai uh, in any field you might be interested in. Um, so you could work with faculty members on that. Um, faculty members, because of our small class size are very much willing um, and looking to engage you know, with students. They're looking for you to come up to them and ask them about their research and get involved in that. They may recommend uh, internships um, or full-time jobs um, that, that, um, that they know about through their connections uh, throughout China and throughout the rest of the world. So it really is a wonderful environment for, um, for discovering a lot of opportunities um, through, these, um, through these relationships. And we also have a number of exciting research institutes in conjunction with, in partnership with Chinese universities, including one in data science and artificial intelligence, um, physics, uh, Center for Global Asia, uh, for, for social science and humanities research, uh, among many others. Um, so a lot of really thing, uh, exciting things that you can get involved in in the research space. Now I mentioned NYU's global network before, so I want to take a minute to, to look at this a little bit more specifically. Um, we have our three degree granted campuses, New York City, Abu Dhabi, and Shanghai, uh, three of the most interconnected cities in the world and very much intentional places for um, NYU to have campuses. We also have uh, 12 smaller sites or global academic centers where students can spend a semester or two, uh, whether Accra, Ghana, Tel Aviv, Israel, Sydney, Australia, a wide variety of different options. And NYU Shanghai students spend at least one, but up to two semesters outside of Shanghai um, during their, their undergraduate studies. You can really apply to, to study uh, anywhere throughout the NYU global network. Um, some sites have um, unique course options. For example, in uh, NYU Los Angeles, you'll find um, uh, a lot of courses in business, like in entertainment and media, uh, Washington DC, um, a lot of courses in international relations and politics. Um, and you may also be doing an internship on Capitol Hill while you're there. Um, at, at NYU's uh, site in Accra, Ghana. There's a Center for Technology and Economic Development. Um, you could do some research in that space and maybe intern uh, with a local startup. There really is no limit uh, to the different opportunities that you can explore. Uh, 
I want to note that these are all NYU operated and owned sites. So your financial aid um, is going to, to, to move with you as you study throughout the global network, but everything is a pre-approved NYU class. So there's never an issue of, of credits transferring. Uh, credits are always going to transfer and they work well with a number of different NYU uh, academic programs. Um, and one unique opportunity while you're studying away is um, com uh, completing a global network minor. So these are minors completed at these study away sites that are often unique to the sites um, in particular. For example, in um, at uh, NYU Buenos Aires, there's a global network minor in Latin American culture and society. Um, at NYU um, Tel Aviv, you can complete a minor in Hebrew and Judaic studies. So a number of wonderful options um, for, for, for different types of minors um, as well. And you can check out our website for a full list of different uh, global network minors and NYU Shanghai minors, uh, different academic options that you can complete um, as an NYU Shanghai student. Now, of course, the academics, the study abroad, these are all you know, wonderful pieces of the NYU Shanghai experience. Um, but I certainly didn't forget about professional development, especially as you look ahead to the world after graduation. I'm sure you're thinking about uh, how NYU Shanghai in particular is going to prepare you for the world that you're graduating into. So let me start off by saying that all NYU students, whether NYU New York, Abu Dhabi, or Shanghai, um, are awarded the same U.S. diploma from the trustees of New York University. At NYU Shanghai, you also are awarded a second diploma, a Chinese diploma by, uh, from NYU Shanghai. We are officially both a U.S. and a Chinese institution officially recognized by the Chinese Ministry of Education. Now, you'll work with our Career Development Center um, on really paving a, a unique professional path for yourself. Um, our Career Development Center offers one-on-one um, -on -one advising for specific career advice related to what you might be most interested in. We um, host a number of career uh, fairs where we're welcoming employers um, from our, around the city. Um, we are also hosting, um, we host a number of um, workshops for students to develop certain key career skills. And of course, support students um, as they apply to, to jobs and internships, cover letters, um, support with uh, interview prep uh, and whatever students might need um, throughout that process. Ultimately, um, you'll be you'll have a number of different opportunities. For one, we have an NYU Shanghai database of jobs, um, and our Career Development Center has done a wonderful job of building up really strong ties um, with employers throughout uh, throughout the city and beyond. And, and, and at this point, employers are really excited to work with NYU Shanghai students specifically. Uh, but then also, you'll eventually get access to the entire NYU database of jobs uh, as well, which includes countless internship and full-time job opportunities um, around the world. Um, you'll also have the opportunity to tap into NYU's uh, extensive alumni system, uh, um, alumni network, including, of course, your own NYU Shanghai alumni, as well as over 500,000 NYU alumni across 180 countries. In fact, we have a specific program, the uh, Executive uh, Alumni Mentorship Program for connecting you with NYU alumni who are working in China, which is a wonderful way of, of having a, a mentor that gives you advice on, on working in China specifically, um, but also can provide advice that is ultimately helpful for wherever you may want to end up uh, after graduation. So speaking of after graduation, students are very successful after or after they graduate from NYU Shanghai uh, in gaining employment or ending up in graduate school in a wide variety of places. 62% of the class of 2021 are living outside of their home countries, um, with 13% of international graduates living in China. Uh, I love to see this statistic because it really goes to show that NYU Shanghai students are really excited about exploring new avenues in, in, in different places um, and really excited about going outside their comfort zone in the best way. Um, overall, they're quite successful at landing somewhere with 93% either working or in graduate school after graduation. Um, and with the class of 2021 working at exciting companies like Amazon, Ubisoft, JP Morgan, Deloitte, Colgate Palmolive, um, and attending really um, fantastic graduate schools at places like Cambridge, Yale, and MIT. You know, when I think about some of the previous classes as well, I was so excited to hear about students working um, for a variety of companies uh, in a variety of places, working for Facebook uh, in Ireland, Amazon, Luxembourg, um, working, um, completing Fulbright uh, in Malaysia, investment banking in Mongolia, Google in California, uh, IBM in North Carolina, uh, an environmental organization in Germany. The list goes on and on. 
And I frequently hear from our students that the experience they've had at NYU Shanghai has been really valuable in helping them uh, carve out their own particular niche uh, in the professional world after graduation. Students are graduating from, from NYU Shanghai, not only emerging authorities in whatever field they're studying, but emerging authorities on China and China's role in that field. And in an increasingly global, global world, interconnected world where China is playing um, an important role, this is really valuable uh, to uh, employers who, who understand the value of, you know, once again, you know, being immersed in this diverse and dynamic country. Now, it all starts the NYU Shanghai journey with applying, of course. And applying to NYU um, begins with the common application. Now, when you create your common app account and search for New York University, this is just the, this is the only page you'll need. Within this page, you, one of the first questions that you'll be asked uh, is what campuses are you interested in? You could apply to one or more than one campus. And um, if you apply to more than one, then you'll be asked uh, to rank your preferences. So maybe you'll have a first choice, second choice, and even up to a third choice if you're applying to all three. The most successful applicants to NYU Shanghai will list Shanghai as their first choice. Um, but everything else really is kind of standardized from there. So the deadlines, uh, November 1st, early decision one, January 1st, early decision two, and uh, re uh, January 5th for regular decision. Early decision is your way of saying NYU is your number one choice uh, and you're committing to, to painting your walls violet and committing to coming to NYU if you're admitted. Wonderful option if this is how you feel, um, but if you're not ready to make that commitment, then January 5th regular decision is a perfectly, you know, perfectly fine option uh, for you. So think about what might work best. Um, and then choose the, the deadline that works best for you. Now, regardless of what deadline you choose, uh, the things we'll be looking at really are the same. We're going to be looking at your academics, so your grades from high school, your transcripts from high school, in uh, conjunction with a school report um, that a counselor or someone from your school will submit. This will tell us information about your school, the different courses um, offered, and things like that, which will help us understand your transcript. So if we're asking the question, are you challenging yourself in the context of what's available uh, at your school? We need to know what's available at your school. Um, and then as we look at your, your, your grades, you know, we'll be looking at maybe um, how you've done at, at different points. Um, did you improve over time? Um, you ultimately can use the additional information section of the Common App uh, to explain uh, anything about your academic record that you feel um, needs uh, extra explanation uh, as well. In terms of standardized testing, um, we'll be looking at um, your testing if you would like. So NYU currently uh, for this uh, academic cycle, 2020 uh, application cycle of 2022 to 2023 um, have still been test optional. So that means um, that if you would like to um, submit a test in line with NYU's flexible standardized testing policy, you can, um, but you're not required to, and you're not going to be disadvantaged if you decide to apply test optional without a test score. If you do, you can take a look at our website at the types of exams we accept. Things like SAT, ACT are quite common, uh, but also three AP exams. Um, uh, IB scores predicted or final, A levels predicted or final, a wide number of uh, national exams from around the world. Um, you can take a look at our website and decide what might work for you if you would like to submit a test score. But then there are other pieces of the, the process as well. Your letters of recommendation, we require one. It can be from a teacher, counselor, or other authority figure, like a tutor or a coach. Um, and then you could still submit up to three. Um, so choose whoever you feel can best um, speak to your experiences in the classroom and outside the classroom. In addition, um, we have your, um, we will review your activities section in the Common App. Activities you might be involved in could include things like sports or clubs, but also things like work outside of class, um, or maybe you support um, a family member, maybe you tutor a sibling. Um, whatever you might be involved in outside of class, we, we definitely want uh, to know a little bit more. And then finally, your writing. The main common app essay is your place to talk a little bit more about yourself. Share uh, share what you're excited about, what you're passionate about. Share a story about yourself that helps us to understand you more. Um, it really should be a personal piece that gives us insight into who you are. Um, you know, beyond what we see in the other parts, like the grades. Right? There is clearly much more to you uh, besides your academics, and we want to know um, what you're what you're really excited about and passionate about. 
Um, you can really write about whatever topic you'd like. In fact, one of the last prompts uh, uh, for the Common App essay just asks you to write an essay on a topic of your choice. So you really have a lot of flexibility there. And then finally, there's an optional essay where you can share a little bit more information um, about uh, your identity and how you contribute to the diverse community at NYU. Once again, this is optional. Feel free to fill it out if you would like, but um, you, um, if you wouldn't, wouldn't like to, this is perfectly fine. It is optional. Finally, financial aid is available to all students, regardless of citizenship. U.S. citizens, um, everyone should be filling out or submitting the CSS financial aid profile. And then U.S. citizens and permanent residents are also submitting the FAFSA um, as well. Please make sure that you're submitting these documents by the financial aid deadlines available on our website um, so that when you're ultimately ideally admitted to uh, NYU, you're also uh, able to have a financial aid package to make an informed decision about whether or not um, NYU is the place for you. So this concludes the presentation portion. I know that was a lot of information, but I hope this was helpful. Um, you can stay connected with us in a number of ways. Please check out our website at shanghai.myu.edu. Connect with a member of the admissions team by emailing shanghai.admissions at myu.edu. I also highly recommend checking us out on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Instagram, I would highly recommend because we often have students taking over the Instagram account uh, and, sh and um, sharing stories about um, their, their day to life, uh, day, day to day life at NYU Shanghai and answering questions. And then finally, you can check out our new NYU Shanghai Ask a Student page where you can connect with current students as well. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about NYU Shanghai, and we look forward to being in touch.